Hi everyone, welcome to the American Heritage School Virtual College Fair. We are so excited um, to host you tonight, um, welcome. We, before we get started, um, we do have a few housekeeping items to share with you. Um, and we have some great presenters here uh, to share some great information. First, um, if you have any questions that you would like to ask or pose to our representatives, please use the Q&A button to type your questions to the presenters at any time. Um, they are there and they're available to answer your questions through the Q&A button. Second, your camera and microphone is off, so you are muted and your video is off. The panelists can't see or hear you. There are more sessions happening, so we strongly um, suggest and recommend that you sign up for more sessions and hear more um, about all the great things that these colleges have to share with you tonight. And then lastly, the recording will be available um, a week from today. This session is recorded. Um, and so uh, without further ado, I'll go ahead and get out of the way. Um, we'll go ahead and go, get, go ahead and get started. And we do have um, great universities here from St. John's University, University of Connecticut, Syracuse University, Seton Hall, University of New Haven, and Pennsylvania State University. So we'll go ahead and start with St. John's University. All right, thanks so much. So my name is Jonathan. I'm uh, one of the assistant directors of admission at St. John's University. I'm just gonna pop up my um, screen here and then we'll get started with my presentation. All right, does that work for everyone we can see? Okay, so really I'm gonna quickly talk about St. John's in general and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about the admissions process toward the end of this uh, quick little presentation. So before I go any further about St. John's, there's really four things that you should know about our university and who we are as a school. There's four parts of uh, St. John's and our mission. So we are a mission-driven university. You're going to hear from a lot of different schools tonight and hear about what they're about, why they educate students, why they um, were founded. There's really four parts of who we are. So the first part is we are a Catholic school. Um, I don't know if you could tell by the name St. John's University, but surprise, it is a Catholic school. You do not need to be Catholic to attend St. John's. So only about half our students are uh, Roman Catholic. So religion is celebrated, all different types of religions. Even if you don't have a religious preference, you are also welcome on campus. We're also a Vincentian school. So we're founded by the Congregation of the Mission, which is known as the Vincentian community. And they follow the teachings of St. Vincent de Paul. So you see his picture right there at the bottom. So we follow his, uh, in his way, really helping the poor and the marginalized in society. So taking what we're learning in the classroom and applying it to the real world. How can we take, um, you know, what we're learning in business school and apply it to real world practices with helping those on the margins. Third part of our mission is we're a metropolitan school. We're in New York City. I'm going to talk about our locations throughout New York City um, and taking advantage of what New York has to offer is a really great opportunity for you as a student. The third, fourth part of our mission is we are a global school. So we actually operate campuses abroad and I'm going to talk a little bit about what does that look like. So let's talk about where we're located. So what I do is bring the New York City subway map. It helps people get acclimated of where exactly in New York are you. New York is a huge city made up of five different boroughs. Um, we are located in three of those five boroughs. Our main campus, what we call the flagship campus to St. John's, that's located in the borough of Queens. So you're gonna see that on the right side of the map there. Our second campus is on the North shore of Staten Island, which you'll see at the lower corner of the map there. And then our third campus is on the lower east side of Manhattan, right near NYU, right near Cooper Union. And that's home to our business programs and our insurance programs. So something to check out. Now we're also a global school. We've got a campus in Rome, another one in Paris, and a third partnership program in Limerick, Ireland. So you can study in Ireland as a new location. So being a global university gives you a lot of great opportunities um, for study abroad. Just to give you an idea of what does the campus look like, um, you're here in New York City and you're probably wondering what exactly does campus look like. This is a picture of our Queens campus, so the flagship campus. It's about 100 acres. We're located right there in central Queens. Um, we are a gated community, so we are a traditional college campus in New York City, which is a great opportunity for you if you're looking to study in a great city like New York, but also looking for a more traditional college feel. Um, we kind of offer the best of those both worlds there. So that's a little bit about the main campus. Let's talk about opportunities that were abroad. So I mentioned we are located um, 
in Europe. We have two campuses, one in Rome, one in Paris, and then that partnership in Ireland. So you could do a full semester abroad where you'd spend your entire semester in one of those locations, or you could do one of these specialized programs that we offer. And we offer a freshman program, which allows first year students to study for seven days in Rome or Paris. Um, we offer a program where you can do Rome, Paris, and Ireland all in one semester. That's called the Western Europe semester. And then we have two new programs that started about two years ago that are called the Study Abroad Latin America programs. And that's where you could spend a full semester in Costa Rica or a full semester in Colombia. The cool thing about these is these are all St. John's programs. So tuition is exactly the same. So scholarship, financial aid, everything travels with you abroad, which makes it a really great opportunity um, for you and your education outside the United States. Just to give you a quick overview of St. John's, kind of how large are we? We're about almost 17,000 undergraduate students. Um, that makes us the second largest Catholic university in the United States. With that, it means we have a large alumni network. You're gonna see over 180,000 alumni um, have graduated from St. John's. What that doesn't mean is we have large class sizes. So our average class size is right around 30, 35 students, um, which really gives you a great opportunity to connect with professors and your classmates on campus. But it also means we have a lot to do on campus, over 180 clubs and organizations to get involved with as well. And some of the, those things you can check out are with all of the different programs that we offer, with over 100 different academic programs at St. John's, all broken up into five different colleges. So you'll get to look at those. You can go on our website and check out all of the different programs that we do offer. You may have heard of us through athletics. Um, a lot of people, I'm, I'm here with some great athletic program schools. Um, we are a division one school in the Big East Conference and you'll see our sports listed right there up on the page here, but you'll also see our club sports and our intramural programs where you get involved with, other things to check out. You can ask me questions about that as well. Um, we're most known for basketball. It's kind of our claim to fame. That's why you see Madison Square Garden right there at the bottom of the screen. Also being in New York gives you access to some great internship opportunities. And that's something that you really wanna um, take into account when you're thinking about your education. How is this preparing me for life after college? And St. John's being in New York City gives you access to a lot of Fortune 500 companies and a lot of great things. So that brings us to how do I apply? So application, we are on the Common App. We have our own application. We are a free application. We do not charge an application fee at all. Um, really all we need to make a decision is high school transcripts from your school. Everything else is optional. So we are a test optional school. We don't require test scores. Uh, we would say send in all of these things that are optional. It always helps your application. So send in letters of recommendation, send in an essay, send in a resume, but it's all optional. Now keep in mind, the more information we have in the admissions office, the better informed decision we can make about your application. And that brings me to the end of the quick little presentation. Um, thanks so much, everyone. You can ask your questions uh, in the Q&A. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, we'll go ahead and move uh, forward to our next school with uh, University of Connecticut. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me tonight. Very excited to be here. Actually, in my office for the first time all year, so that's very exciting. Um, but we're going to get some information here. Um, and fly through a little bit about the University of Connecticut. So my name is Dan. Um, I work with all students from the southeastern portion of the country, um, and we are just going to hop right in. So everybody hopefully can see my screen. I can't see any thumbs anyway. I'm going to hope that somebody would tell me otherwise. Um, but hopping in, we are the flagship university within the state of Connecticut, founded in 1881. Um, we're also a top 25 public university with um, nearly 24,000 students across five campuses, um, and our main campus is in stores, so that's in the northeastern portion of the state. And leading down to that gives you a little bit of information about our, um, our main campus up in stores, up in that right corner of the state, and then our four other, oh, what happened? Okay, sorry about that. Uh, gives you a little bit of information about where we're located. Um, we're right in the heart of New England. I don't know what is going on with my presentation. I apologize. I'm gonna just turn off my... Okay, so that should be good there. Um, so we will move into a little bit about um, our community. Um, we do have a lot of first-generation students. 
Um, one in four are first generation, um, and we do also have a very diverse population from all across the world as well. Um, so we'll move into a little bit about academic programs. Uh, over 115 academic majors across 10 schools and colleges. Uh, some of our biggest and most popular programs are housed within uh, the School of Business, the School of Nursing, and then the School of Engineering. Um, but we do have some more selective programming that I'll show you in a moment as well. Um, some more unique programming that we have at the university, we do have an individualized major for students that want to pilot their own program. Um, the one caveat is there has to be that coursework at the university to begin with. Um, I think criminal justice is one that students frequently will pilot or international business. Um, you see their student faculty ratio is 16 to one. So while we are kind of a mid-sized campus um, in the grand scheme of the country, I know students in Connecticut are like, oh, it's a huge campus. It's because we live in a small state. Um, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, we are, we are a mid-sized campus, um, but we do try to keep our courses pretty small and personalized so that students are still able to get that opportunity um, for any support that they might need. We're also a research one university. Um, so for students that are looking to get involved in any type of um, student research, that's definitely readily available from first year all the way up to senior year. And as I was speaking a little bit before about um, some of our more selective programs, we do have special programs in law, medicine, uh, dentistry, and education. Those programs um, basically are sequenced programs where students are able to enroll as a first year student or as undergraduates um, into several different programs within several different schools and colleges at the university um, with the expectation that they're going to go on and get that graduate level degree um, in either law, medicine, dentistry, or education. Um, the caveat to that program as well, um, students have the opportunity to use that program with the University of Connecticut or go on to graduate programming at any other institution in the country. Um, so that is definitely a very popular uh, and very competitive um, program within our special programs. Um, selective programs on the right there, as I had spoken about before, school of business, engineering, nursing, and fine arts. Um, and to give you an idea of you know, the student body that we enroll, um, more than 50% of our incoming class from last year was in the top 10% of their senior class. Um, so we definitely do have some high achievers on our campus. A little bit about athletics and student life. Um, you know, as uh, my colleague John from St. John's had said, um, you know, we're probably very well known by many people for our athletics. Um, we actually just got back to the Big East this year. Very exciting um, to be back where, where we started athletically. Um, but we do have a lot of other great activities um, and things that students can get involved with as well. So 700 plus student run organizations and clubs. Um, we have numerous different club and intramural sports. Um, and then we do have a lot of opportunities to get involved with community service um, or practical experiences, whether it be internships um, or independent studies, anything like that. So over 700 companies um, are actively working with our students, whether it be through internship um, or employing their st our students when they graduate. Um, so there is a ton of opportunity at the University of Connecticut in several different areas. A little bit, as I'd said before, about community service. Um, so community service is definitely a big component of an education at the University of Connecticut. Um, we do our best to support the state, you know, that has supported us for, you know, over 100 years. Um, we are the only land, um, sea, and space institution within the state of Connecticut, basically meaning that we receive funding for that uh, within research um, within all of those areas. So community service is a huge thing. You can see the amount of community service our students do um, annually, which is probably one of the stats I'm most um, proud of on this, on this little um, presentation here. And then we do also have study abroad as well. Um, so a lot of opportunities for uh, this is the average coursework that we kind of look for for students um, to complete throughout high school. I usually explain this as this is not a checklist. Um, this is kind of the average coursework that we will be looking for for students to complete throughout their four years of high school. And then leading into a little bit about the application finishing up here, um, we are a member of the Common App and the Coalition application. Um, all we require is your high school transcript, your personal essay, um, two letters of recommendation, uh, SAT and ACT scores are optional. We went optional for or test optional for the next three cycles starting this year. 
And then the application fee is $80, but that can also be waived through your guidance counselor or college board. And I think Catherine is telling me, I think my time might be up. Um, so that was really all I had. Thank y'all so much. Um, I guess the only thing I have to say otherwise, we're a regular decision institution. Um, March 1st is when we drop decisions. December 1st is priority deadline. January 5th is regular deadline. And that all I have, thank you so much for bearing with me with all the technical uh, difficulties. I appreciate it. Great, thank you so much. Very helpful information. Um, just a reminder, if you have any questions to please uh, use the Q&A button um, at the bottom of your screen to submit any questions for our representatives this evening. Um, next, we have um, Syracuse University. Awesome, thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Tracy Zapola. I'm an Associate Director in the Office of Admissions at Syracuse University. I'm also a proud Syracuse alum from longer ago than you probably care. So I won't talk about my own experience, but rather our current students and what they're doing. Here's a live picture of our university. Not really live, I'm just kidding. It's from the fall, um, obviously with the beautiful colors, but in case you haven't been up to upstate New York and you haven't had an opportunity to come and see Syracuse, in whether it's the fall or spring or in the middle of the winter, I wanna make sure that you get some visuals and you can see our beautiful campus. So we're smack dab right in the middle of upstate New York. So we're about um, five hours from most major cities, which makes it really, really convenient. But for you Floridians, don't you worry, you don't have to fly into New York, or you don't have to fly into um, you know, Boston to get to Syracuse. The airport's about 20 minutes away. Uh, there are direct flights back and forth all the time. I know them very, very well. And so it'll be easy for you to get to campus we do have students from over 170 different countries on our campus. We're really diverse in every sense of the word. And that makes Syracuse a great place to come and learn. So we have incredible programs. We have over 200 academic majors and 100 minors. Opportunities for you to engage in learning through all of our 10 schools and colleges. And then what I like to highlight is the opportunity for you to perhaps do a double major or a dual major. So you might not just be interested in studying forensic science. You might also be interested in real estate. How do you combine those programs? Well, the good news is, is you can at Syracuse. We want our students to have the opportunity to explore these academic programs. And we really are top ranked in such a large variety of programs, which makes it nice. We will have career and academic advising services in each of our 10 schools and colleges. So when you go to get that great job or that great internship that you'll have over the summer, you will have those professionals and those experts to help guide you through that process. We want to engage students in their learning. We want you to get that hands-on experience. So we have our students who are working in our research labs. Just like the other schools, we're a research one institution, which means that our students are actively engaged in that academic research. We also have students who are pursuing entrepreneurship or starting their own businesses. Really interesting and neat for students to take those ideas to the Blackstone launch pad. In fact, anytime I turn on Shark Tank, I see one of our former students or current students who happens to be pitching their entrepreneurial idea on that show. And then we do have study abroad programming available for all of our students. About 50% of our Syracuse University students study abroad at some point during their academic career. That could be a summer program, a short period of time program over a couple weeks, maybe a program over spring break or a full uh, semester academic program. Whatever the case may be, we'll have it available for you. We have programs in over 60 different countries and we own and operate five different center programs where our students can go and study. So a lot of options for you. I think options is the big word at Syracuse. We want you to get involved. We want you to be part of our campus. With other, over 300 clubs and organizations, we really will get you involved with the community, with other students who may have similar interests to you, or just trying something new. 
I always like to talk about what our students are doing right now. So this past weekend, I got to join them in trying cross country skiing for the first time and go snow tubing at night. A little scary snow tubing in the complete pitch black dark, I must say, <laughs> but um, our students are active, they're engaged. Even right now in the middle of the pandemic, when we're you know, doing things a little different, we still wanna get our students together and have them really engage in some really neat activities. One of the great highlights of Syracuse is the continuation to always expand what we have as opportunities and to enhance our opportunities. So the Barnes Center at the Arch opened a year ago. It's our health and wellness integrated facility. I would love to tell you more, but I don't have time. Our Shine Student Center reopened just three weeks ago. Brand new location for our students, renovated location, I should say, for our students to have an opportunity to meet as student clubs and organizations. This is a space designed for students by students. So we're really, really excited about that. And then fantastic dining options, living, we are a residential campus. So you will be required to live on campus for your first two years as a student at Syracuse. You saw that picture right before of athletics, or our students at our stadium cheering on. Uh, we are in the ACC network, former Big East, sorry. Um, form, we were formerly in the Big East and moved over to the ACC network and really have fantastic athletics in so many different sports, um, including men's and women's soccer, women's ice hockey, obviously our men's, women's um, lacrosse, basketball, and our men's football teams. So you will get a chance to get into the stadium, which is right on our campus to cheer on the orange. So how do you join our family? We would love to have you. You can apply to Syracuse as an early decision applicant. The deadline for early decision is going to be November 15th. Regular decision applicants, deadline January 1st, test optional for 2022. We do offer interviews. We would love to chat with you. Those will begin in July. So take a look at our website for those opportunities. And we are committed to affordability. We recognize that college is expensive. Private college is expensive. So we're gonna do our best to meet full anticipated need for all of our students. And that comes in the form of merit aid and traditional financial aid. And with that, my timer went off and I am all done. This is our contact information and I'll share it in the chat as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we will uh, pass it over to Seton Hall University. Alrighty. Hello everyone, my name is Ernea Evans. I am the Southeast Regional Representative for Seton Hall University. Um, and what is Seton Hall? We are a small private liberal, arts, private liberal arts Catholic school located in South Orange, New Jersey. And we offer all of the advantages of a large research institution um, with all the benefits of a small supportive and nurturing environment. Um, as I stated, we're in South Orange, New Jersey, and we only have about, um, it's about 14 miles outside of New York City. We have about 6,200 undergraduate students represented from all of the states and several countries. Um, and we are also, we have about 45% of our students who are uh, non-white. So our diversity is uh, really great. Um, the average class size for um, Seton Hall is about 21. Um, so we have a 14 to 1 student to teacher rate ratio. So we try to have as many small class classes as possible so that we can give you that one on one attention that you need. Um, and we do do a lot with our internships, counseling, disability support, tutors, health and wellness. So we try to make um, your path to success as great as possible. We have seven colleges and across those seven colleges, we have over 90 programs. Um, so a little bit of everything for everybody. Um, some of our unique programs are our partnership with the uh, Stevenson Institute of Technology for engineering, our dual law programs, our School of Health and uh, Medical Science, which includes physical therapy, physician assisting, um, nursing, and then our joint MD program, which we are actually in our second year um, having. 
Um, internships and careers, um, we are fourth in the nation for internship opportunities. So we try to make sure that our students are prepared when they leave us, not that they have to go out and get prepared. So our students do internships all year long because of our location being so close to New York City. The Center for um, Access is an award-winning uh, academic advising program. So when you come in as a freshman, we give you a mentor that tries to help you with that smooth transition um, into college life and develop your social network. So we just really want you to um, have all of the things that you need when you get to college so you're not just um, haphazardly walking around and trying to figure out how to make it all work. Um, our student life, we have over 130 clubs and organizations, dance team, choir, 22 Greek organization. Um, we have our student led theater performances, dances, carnivals. So, so I tell students, your boredom is determined by your participation. Um, like uh, St. John and UConn, we are a Division One Big East school. Basketball is, again, one of our bigger popular, big and popular sports, but we do have um, over 25 clubs and intramural activities and 50%, about 50% of our students do um, take advantage of that. So you don't have to play a division one sport to um, feel a part of the uh, athletic part of the campus. Housing and residence life, about 50% of our undergraduate population stays on campus. We do have residence halls and apartments. Um, we have RAs in each dorm. So you can definitely feel comfortable in your home away from home. Um, our current tuition is about 61000 However, we try to make that as affordable as possible. I know we are private, um, but we do give out a lot of scholarships and grants. Um, and a lot of that comes directly from Seton Hall. And you can apply for some special scholarships. And if you receive them, they are stackable. Um, how to apply to Seton Hall. We have our early action one and two dates that are November and December 15th, regular decision, our February and uh, March 1st. We do have our application. Um, you can do it through Common App or the Seton Hall app, um, essays, transcripts, SAT or ACT. This year we were test optional. Um, so except for our MD program, we do have a $55 application fee, but today for joining us. If you write down XFW, that'll waive the application fee. And again, that's XFW. Um, and we do a holistic review, um, but we do have some averages of a 3.6 GPA, uh, 12, 20, 1235 on the AC, SAT and a 27 on the SAT. But those are just the averages how to visit. We are still doing in-person visits, um, but you can come and do a virtual tour Monday through Saturday, um, or you can come in person and do a campus tour. Um, again, those are Monday through Saturday. Monday through Friday is 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. and Saturday is 10 a.m., 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Um, we do have some open houses coming up in April, um, as well as October and November. And that is it. I hope that I got enough information, but this is my contact information, how you can follow us on social media. Um, but just keep in mind that although we are private, I mean, although we are Catholic, um, like St. John, you don't have to be Catholic to attend Seton Hall. It's just um, our, our foundation and we welcome all faiths um, to our campus. But again, my contact information, and I do hope that you will um, apply. And again, that code is XFW to waive the application fee. And with that, I'm done. With one second to spare. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, just a reminder again, if you have any questions, there have been some great questions coming in through the Q&A button. So if you have any questions, um, please make sure to um, submit them there. And to also note what school um, or university you are referring to, um, that is very helpful for our representatives to make sure they answer, um, the right person answers your question. Um, so with that, we'll go to our next uh, college and university, which is University of New Haven. Awesome, thank you. I'm just gonna share my screen really quick. Awesome, so hey everyone, my name is Michelle Atala. I'm an admissions counselor over at University of New Haven. Um, so today I'm just gonna give a quick um, presentation. So the first thing that I want to touch on is our location. 
Um, even though we're University of New Haven, we're actually located just about five miles away in West Haven, Connecticut. Um, the reason why we're actually called University of New Haven is because we were founded on Yale's campus in New Haven back in 1920 and then moved over to West Haven um, in around 1960 to have the suburban area to be able to expand the campus. Um, we're just about five to 10 minutes away from Long Island Sound, so right next to the beach. A lot of our upperclassmen will. We're also um, right in between Boston and New York City. Um, we're just about an hour and a half from New York City and about two hours from Boston. And we have the train stations that will get you right there. You just hop onto our campus shuttle. It'll get you right to the train station, which will get to right, you right into um, either cities. Our students will not only you know, take advantage of how easy it is to get out there and take day trips on the weekends, but they'll also use this um, to find internships out in the cities as well. So we have 5,000 full-time undergraduate students. Um, that puts us in the small to medium-sized campus range. What that means for you is um, walking to class every day, you're going to see someone you know, you're going to see a friend, but we're large enough where walking to class every day, you're going to meet someone new every single day that you're on campus. Our average class size is about 22 students. Um, so it's a very personalized classroom size. settings. Um, so again, your professor, they, they really want to get to know you. They want to help you with networking because majority of our professors either did work in the field that they're studying or they are currently. Um, so they're able to offer you those, those um, connections as well in, in the workforce. So we have over 100 majors and programs on campus and they are in our um, five colleges that we have on campus. So we have our College of Arts and Sciences, our School of Health Sciences, our College of Business, our College of Engineering, as well as our College of Criminal Justice and Forensic Science. So 97%, this is a very significant number, 97% I think Michelle may be experiencing some te technical difficulties. Okay. Uh, Michelle, can you hear me? Hey, Michelle, can you hear us? Yeah, can you hear me? Okay, yes, yes. You're just going, you just went out um, for a few seconds. So just want to make sure we still have you. Okay, am I good now? Yes, you're good now. Okay, awesome. Thank you for letting me know. Yeah, um, no problem. I don't know where I just left off, but um, I'll just say the slide over. So 97% of our 2019 graduating class um, within six months of graduating had a job directly in their field of study or went on to graduate school. And again, that was in um, within six months of graduating. So aside from academics, we have over 200 clubs and organizations on campus. Um, we really have something for everyone. We actually have um, our saying that says it's impossible to be bored. And that's because we just, we have a club for just about everything. Um, we have a Jedi knitters club, for example. So for students that like Star Wars and like knitting, there's a club for them. We have a ghost hunters club, um, a hacking club. We have all types of clubs and organizations. And if you want to create a club, you just have to grab a couple of their friends and a faculty member and you're able to create a club and even apply for funding. These are just some visuals. Um, we have a marching band, a dance team, and a cheerleading team. Um, we have Greek life, which you can see in these bottom pictures. Um, only about 17% of our students are in Greek life, but they definitely make their presence known on campus um, through fundraisers, blood drives, and other things that will look great on your resume as well. Um, we also have a student-run radio station um, that broadcasts out to all of Connecticut, and our students have actually won some awards, so it's a great radio station as well. We also have study abroad opportunities um, and we have study abroad opportunities in over 100 countries, um, as well as we have our satellite campus over in Prado, Italy. So it is University of New Haven in Italy, um, and you can actually study there for the same exact tuition um, as studying here in West Haven. All of your financial aid and scholarships will go through. The only difference that you would pay is your plane ticket. 
Um, so definitely an awesome opportunity as well. So we are part of the um, Division II in the NCAA Northeast 10 Conference. We have 17 varsity athletic teams. We also have club sports as well um, as intramural, intramural sports too. So um, if you, let's say you wanted to, you know, play a sport, um, but you didn't want to be on the varsity team, um, maybe you don't want to want the time commitment or whatever it is, you can join a club sport. They still compete, still travel regionally. It's just, again, less of that, less of that um, time commitment of the varsity team. So we have scholarships as well that you are um, awarded right upon acceptance, um, which you can see on the left-hand side are academic uh, merit-based scholarships. So once you submit the Common App to us, um, you will be um, awarded a scholarship between $10,000 and $26,000. And these are just some additional scholarships. So we have a $1,000 honor scholarship, um, a marching band scholarship. We have scholarship for some business students as well as portfolio scholarship for our art and design majors. Um, I, I know I'm over six minutes. I think this is one of the last slides, so I'll just go really quick. We have some on-campus and virtual visit opportunities. Um, we have um, on-campus one-on-one and virtual information sessions, as well as tours. We have drive-through campus tours as well. Um, we have nights with financial aid and admissions, which is virtual, and then we have virtual accepted student events. So if you go on newhaven.edu slash visit, you can um, register for any of these events that we have. That's actually the end of my presentation. So thank you guys so much. I know I went over a little um, and thanks for bearing with my technical difficulties. Great, um, we have heard so much um, great information. Um, again, if you have any questions, um, submit those through the Q&A um, button and uh, we'll pass it over to our last presenter. Uh, last but certainly not least, uh, Pennsylvania State University. Awesome. So it actually just started storming here. So I apologize if I go in or out. But my name is Katie Immel. I have a course and the Florida admissions counselor. So questions you guys have throughout the admissions process, email me. I will have my email on the last slide. But let's talk a little bit about Penn State. So let me go here. Nothing ever wants to work when I want it to. Um, we are a top 1% university in the entire world. So out of 18,000 universities, we were recently ranked number 53. We're super proud of that because a lot of our different programs and academic colleges are in the top 10, top five, even number one program in the nation. But we also think this top ranking comes from the amount of undergraduate research we have. So we have over a billion dollars this past year of undergraduate research. So if you wanna be involved as early as your first semester, you're going to have plenty of options. We study anything and everything. Don't just think you're science-based majors. I could touch on any of these things if you guys have questions in the chat, but <clears throat> I wanted to talk a little bit more about what we offer to our students. So we have over 275 majors to choose from. Um, some of our really popular ones are business, engineering, nursing, musical theater. Um, did I say engineering? I think I did. Um, but all of those are what we call academic colleges. So you apply to them, you get accepted as a pre-major, and then you're able to kind of figure out which one of those majors you want. You might think you want civil engineering. When you get it down to it, you actually want biomedical engineering. Don't worry, we have them all. <clears throat> one of the other programs I always talk about is our Division of Undergraduate Studies. This is a program for students that are just undecided. We think it's totally fine at 16, 17, 18 years old not to know what you want to do the rest of your life. So come in undecided. Let our advisors help you find your passion at Penn State. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, that's what we have inside the classroom. We also have a ton of activities outside the classroom, over 1,200 clubs and activities to participate in. These range from purely fun to purely academic, religious, cultural, service organizations, um, networking, IM sports, basically anything you can think of. Chances are we already have it. One of the pictures back here is THON, which is our 46 hour dance marathon where we help raise money for families fighting pediatric cancer. It was actually held virtually this past weekend. So literally just yesterday, we found out that our students raised $10.6 million this year. So in a year of a pandemic, we're extremely excited about that amount. It's actually the largest student run philanthropy in the entire world. So it's really exciting to be a part of, but you don't have to be a part of THON. You can be a part of any of our clubs. As many of them have said, don't be bored. This is what college is for, is to get involved. So you can do all of these things and more at all 20 of our campuses. So if you are unfamiliar with the state of Pennsylvania, we do have 20 beautiful, unique campuses spread out throughout the state. 
If you're familiar, you might have heard of Philadelphia or Pittsburgh. They're two large cities in the state of Pennsylvania, so we have campuses that are close to them. Smack dab in the middle is University Park. That's our largest campus with 46,000 students, so it is a very large campus. The other ones range in size from about 500 students to about 5,000 students. So if you are looking for a smaller liberal arts style school, we have a campus that fits. If you're looking for that really big 10 huge campus, we have one there too. Um, the really great part is no matter where you start or finish, you are going to get a Penn State degree. So um, a lot of our students, actually more than 50% participate in our two plus two program. So they're able to start at one of our smaller campuses for their first two years and then choose to attend University Park their last two years or another campus that offers their major. This is really important because those smaller class sizes are important, that one-on-one -on -one attention, but also their significant cost savings by going to one of those other campuses. I'm going to quickly go over what you need to apply, but if you have questions about any of these campuses, just go ahead and email me. We need your online application either through the Coalition app, the Common app, or the My Penn State app. We have no preference. We also need a self-reported academic record known as a SRAR. This is where you put all of the classes you took from grades 9 through 11 and your schedule for grade 12 um, and the grade you received from grades 9 through 11. So we will not look at your senior year grade. That does not mean you shouldn't do well and do your best. It just means that we will only review your GPA up until 11th grade. We are test optional, as most of these schools said, um, throughout 2023. So what that means is it's completely optional. If you were able to take the SAT or ACT and you think you did well and it's an accurate description of who you are as a student, go ahead and include it on your application. If you weren't able to take it or you didn't do so hot on it, that's okay too, just go test optional. The important part to remember is whatever you put on that application is what we're looking for. So if you say you want them included, we will be looking for them and you won't have a completed application until we get them. If you send them, but you said you wanted to go test optional, we will not review them because you did not want them included. If you want to estimate your eligibility, this chart can sometimes be helpful, but this is actually last year's middle 50% of students. So they are not hard cutoffs. They're not guarantees of acceptance. If you're within this range, it doesn't mean you automatically get accepted. This past year, it actually was a little bit higher than this. So if you're trying to estimate, you wanna be closer to that three nine range for the University Park campus. If you're lower than this, that's okay. We have access to education as one of our primary goals. So get in touch with me. I will make sure that we answer your questions and make sure that you can find a spot at Penn State. Now, I would not be doing my job if I didn't talk about our amazing alumni network. We actually have the largest alumni network in the entire world, 700,000 and growing. Um, that fun fact on there that one out of every, every 106 Americans with a college degree is a Penn State graduate is something I'm super proud of, but it also means brand recognition. Chances are you've heard of us. Chances are that many people, if they see you in an airport or somewhere else, you're wearing a Penn State shirt, they're gonna scream, we are. And you're of course gonna scream back, Penn State. And that brand recognition really helps when it comes to internships, jobs, fundraising. You're able to know that you're going to be around like individuals that definitely want you um, for their jobs. They're gonna choose your resume first. So with that, I think I'm out of time, but I wanted to at least put my email out there. It's kimmel at psu.edu. Email me with any questions you guys have. Also admissions.psu.edu slash experience will give you to our virtual tours, student panels, information sessions, and so much more. Thanks, guys. Great, thank you so much. Um, again, so great information that's being shared. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, um, we have about two minutes left um, to see if we have a little bit of time we can squeeze for um, a question. Um, so I'll ask all the attendees to go ahead and turn on their video um, and unmute themselves um, for this quick question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, go in the order in which you presented, and I think this will be really helpful before we close out. Okay, so my biggest piece of advice for you in the college search process is talk to students at that current institution. Um, you want to hear what's going on right now. We're great people to talk to, but we are all going to give you the right answer. We're going to tell you what the admissions office wants you to know. You want to talk to a student. You want to hear what are the classes like? What is it like on campus? What's the environment like? Am I going to be friends with people on this campus? Am I not going to be friends with people on this campus? Um, and that'll give you the best, I think, indicator for school fit. Yeah, I'll definitely um, 
echo what Jonathan said with that. I mean, I think speaking to students is always going to give you a great idea on the pulse of the campus that you're looking at. Um, but I'll also, you know, make a plug for folks like us and folks, you know, on the other side of, you know, campus who are teaching you when you get there. Um, don't feel like you can't reach out to us. Um, we're definitely waiting to speak to you about any questions that you may have about really anything that goes on at the university. Um, and we are, you know, at admission and higher ed professional. So, you know, as much as we do work for our respective institutions and universities, um, more than anything, we're looking to support all of you students throughout your process and make sure that wherever you land, it's gonna be a, the best fit for you. Um, so ask your questions, make your lists. Um, you know, if you can visit, definitely visit. If not, do all the virtual things that you can do um, and just take advantage of anything that's, you know, that's available for you. Well, great advice already. Things that I would have said too. Um, and the other thing that I'll say for you in the college search process is just take a breath. Honestly, you know, this is really stressful. It's stressful going into this, especially stressful given what we're going through as a, as a society right now, as a world. So it's going to work out. We promise it is. You have advocates. Your counselors, your high school counselors are huge, huge advocates. Utilize them. They know what they're talking about. Listen to them. And then reach out to us, as, as everybody else has said, and talk with current students at those institutions that you're looking at. Attend to the the virtual sessions um, as much as you possibly can and advocate for yourself. You know, you have to be willing to give yourself a little credit and talk about yourself in your application. And we love to see that. So definitely do that. Just to echo everything. So all of those things, we're going to always tell you all of those things are great. The only thing that I would add, um, considering who we all are, don't be afraid to look outside of your state. It gets comfortable to be near your family, near your friends, because this is what you know. We're all people, all of our schools are up in the Northeast, um, but we come down or we live in Florida, we come down here to um, advocate for our institutions, but we also advocate for leaving the state and coming up to the Northeast. Don't be afraid. I know mom and dad say, I need you close, I need you close. But remember, they make cars, they make trains, they make planes, all, all those things that you can get home um, because you don't want to close your mind off to something that is far greater than what you could experience at home. And considering location, location is like, one of the top things that you can do and thinking about where we all are, those internships, those opportunities, those study abroads, those are things that you may not get by staying home. So go ahead and think outside the box. Florida's great in this sun, but they make um, coats that you can put on to keep warm and you can come up to the Northeast. So that would be my uh, little tidbit. I think those were all um, great pieces of advice. Um, a piece of advice I would give would just definitely be to do your research. Um, all the information that you need is online. So like all you have to do is just spend some time looking it up, looking up the programs at each of the universities that you're um, interested in and also trying to do virtual tours if you can't get on campus. I always recommend trying your best to get on campus um, just for the actual you know, true feel of like being a student on campus. But if you can't do that, um, virtual tours are great to do too. Um, so again, just get online and do your research. Last but not least, again, um, I would just say pay attention to deadlines. That's the most important thing. You could be a great student and just because of when you apply, it could become very, very competitive to get admitted. So all of us have different deadlines. They're all online, very, very noticeable. But usually the beginning of November is kind of everyone's deadline. So September, October, get your applications in. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much for the words of advice. Um, we'll go ahead and wrap up the session um, for this evening. Uh, first, thank you so much to everyone for your um, great advice and um, helpful information. There is going to be a quick survey at the end um, when you close your browser. We just ask that if you can take a few minutes to fill that out for us, that is very helpful and it gives us feedback 
um, to make the sessions better. Um, secondly, there are more sessions happening. Um, so make sure that if you are interested um, to go ahead and register for those sessions where you register for this one. And this recording will be available a week from today. So if you would like to go back to this recording to just review, it will be available um, where you registered for this session as well. So again, thank you all and I hope you have a great evening.